Hey, Andrew, let me ask you a question. Would you explain Bayesian artificial intelligence to us? Well, it's, real, it, it's actually really easy to describe. Um, so the easiest way for, to think of it, I think, is you always think of Bayesian in terms of Bayesian versus frequentist. Uh, frequentist is like, you've got a 30% chance of blah, blah, blah happening. Bayesian is, given X, does Y happen? And the artificial intelligence bit is when you start taking full advantage of the idea of scenario-driven reactions to things. That's so mostly wrong, but it's pretty good for a starting point. So I, read, I was reading these, uh, I was going through all the, li the list of artificial intelligence algorithms, right? And when do you, you know, when do you use which algorithm and which application, uh, you know, um, and... What I want to do is, and like artificial intelligence is the conversation that keeps coming up. What I want to do is I want someone, ideally you, to just come up here and explain, I've got this problem, I need this answer, and I would use a Bayesian algorithm in this application and basically just do what your, you know, your left-handed workflow and explain. Yeah. So, like, there, the, the way I, I, I was thinking about it, like, a uh, long time ago, um, I wanted to apply Bayesian methodologies for process control monitoring. The reason was you can SPC the ever-living garbage out of stuff all day long. Yeah. It's super easy. You just take the sledgehammer of Mac and just beat it to death until the graphs come out. Um, but it's not super useful for people in the morning meeting. So you talk to like maintenance people or operators, and they're like the squiggly lines outside the yellow lines, and that's like bad, right? And then they try to figure out what it means when the squiggly line goes high or low or jumps up too much. With the Bayesian stuff, you'll be able to sit there and go, there's been a process shift. And tell me when this occurred, find things related to it. And you can develop a story. It's, it's, it lends itself to story making better, which I think is far better, because everyone thinks of the line in terms of X happened, and then 30 seconds later, thing broke. And they don't know that connection, and the AI stuff can help with that. Okay. Of course, there's a billion different types of AI, and we're always, you know, 10 years away from AI, even though it's been 30 years. If we, I've got, we got to shoot a couple more, but if we just, if we give you a marker and put the mic on you. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look it up for a bit. Would you just? Search it again. Yeah. Okay. The, the, like, the thing about AI is every time we reach the next level of AI, well, there's this other thing that's real AI. And so, yeah. like, Expert systems didn't really take off, even though they're everywhere all the time now. Uh, you take an expert and you set up rules and you go, here you go. And then the system comes up with ideas. Yeah, we you know? talked about this in the original yeah. video series. OEE is, or MES is like a great example of this because you do all of your OEE calculations that way. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> pro. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this happens. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times the microphone fell when I was in the radio station. The and then, like, I like Bayesian because it is functionally equivalent to all of the stats that people want to run, but I think it answers the what happened at this time far better, or better yet, how do we keep this from happening again? Frequentist says you're screwed. Every six months, send a maintenance guy to do maintenance, and maybe it won't break in time. But what you really want to say is, what's the action that we can do that best fixes this probably? And, and then you'll see the magnitudes of that, and that will determine cost. So artificial intelligence, so here's a, for Zach, the true artificial intelligence is, and what machine learning does, what machine learning and what data lakes do and what AI does right now, is that all, all AI, all of the AI algorithms are a function of X and Y, right? They, for, for every value X, we can determine a likely value Y, right? The, those are the, those are the, that's the artificial intelligence algorithms. Until you get to multivariate data analysis. And that is, uh, yeah, and uh, I can't even remember the name of, of the, the, the algorithm that you primarily use for multivariable. But the w true artificial intelligence is the AI defines what X and Y is. So AI learns what X and, I, X and Y is establishes the relationship, not a human. A human doesn't say, I want to know what the value Y will be for this specific X. True artificial intelligence tells you what the, spits out the X's and the Y's. And then you can use that to do 
analytics, right? But at the end of the day, what you're going to have is for every X, what are the likely values for many Ys? Yeah, and that's actually like a big deal because um, you can do a lot of self-tuning, but computers are dumber and bag of hammers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. But they do it really fast. And yeah. this is actually kind of the win of Bayesian, right? Is And this is why I don't think we see it a whole lot is you kind of need a big iron to really get it, uh, to really make it work well because you it runs through scenarios so it says you have your data and then that data gives you a profile for what the data should look like and then you're like what's the likelihood that this is a process shift and then you run 10,000 scenarios there's like Monte Carlo style calculations running in the background and then you go oh, but most of them you didn't do that very often and that's what I like about Bayesian where you sit there and you go you run 10,000 scenarios and you go, out of that, 300 of them were bad in this way. And that's the sort of thing people get behind because people don't trust straight lines or graphs and you're like, you're predicting the future and you're garbage at it. But they will accept that cloudy days leads to rain. And that helps, you know, when you're talking to maintenance people and operators. I, at least I think so. I always think it's nice. But the downside, of course, if you process control a thousand data points in a machine, um, and you run 10,000 scenarios for each one every time you get an update and you're updating the model as you go, I don't know if we have really good math models that update that in a reasonable period of time. Other right. than to like take a stack of servers, spin up AWS and run it for $1,000 an hour and see if the it tells you what happens. But it is traceable and that's the best part. So, I don't Sweet. know. Thanks True AI is always very funny because we have amazing AI but some of it's kind of dumb. So, you know, everyone's gonna have it.